Okay, so in this video we will actually connect the Raspberry Pi to some real hardware. Very simple start, a button and a, an LED. Um, but uh, the idea for this video is to uh, show how to access GPIO pins from the Raspberry Pi to the real world. And both for incoming data, pressing the button, and outgoing, changing the power state of the LED. So we'll create a Greengrass Lambda in Python, we will listen to the pin connected to the button, and when this button is pressed, we will activate the LED, and we will post a message on an MQTT topic showing that we can you know, show the state of different uh, changes to the backend. Um, and we will test both income and not going. Yeah. Uh, we will deploy this Lambda to AVS, we will configure IoT to use this Lambda, we will also configure our AVS IT to allow this Lambda to access the GPIO pins, and we will configure to uh, uh, be able to, act, uh, to post the uh, um, hello world uh, topic. And we will deploy the Lambda to the Greengrass device and verify that we actually receive the messages and that the little LED over here actually will light up. That's the button. So, um, you see here. Uh, The code for this, as usual, are in the same G, uh, GitHub repo as anything else. Uh, and uh, we will, in this case, then use the control GPI open Lambda Python directory. So, and here we have the function we need. Uh, we need, as we did previously, uh, we need to get the Python SDK. Uh, so we need to copy that here, so we have that, so we can pack this function together later on with the number function and this green grass SDK. So, um, look at the actual code then. So we import a number of parts, the same as we did previously in the um, MPTT example, but here we also import the GPIO library to be able to control the GPIO pins. Um, otherwise, the code is pretty similar. We start with uh, creating the login part. We use the Greengrass SDK to create the IoT client so we need to force things to be backend. Uh, we get the name and we then do some define, define some variables here as well. So, we both here we have the, uh, the button pin number 24 uh, and we set this. Uh, to be in um, pull down mode, so when we start, it's zero, uh, and this is an input pin. And then uh, the LED pin, it's an output pin uh, on port uh, 23, uh, pin 23, uh, and we start this with a low value. Uh, then we define some functions here that we will need later on. So the first one is the button pressed. So when the button is pressed, we will say it is on. Uh, and we will define that it's actually using this global variable. So we said that this is a global variable. We'll use that one. Uh, and the last state is uh, is whatever is on was. Now we say when we press it, it actually is on. Uh, and if the, the, the button state changed, then we print this, we uh, turn the LED on, use the GPIO library output LED pin high, and we post a message to the backend system. If the button is released on the other hand, we do the same thing, we say we indicate that we are want to use the global parameters, we uh, set the last state to whatever it was before, but now we set is on is false. And if the, the, the state was changed, we just uh, set the GPIO pin LED pin to lower step, so we turn off the LED. Not send anything into the backwards for this one. Post hello world, we just just as we did previously, we used the um, Greengrass client to post to the hello world a button pressed on Greengrass device and the name of this Greengrass device. And then we create another function here which is stop button triggered. So when, uh, uh, when the application starts, we will start this while loop. So forever we will check the input pin button uh, state and um, 
if the state is false, then we say it's pressed. If it's not false, then it's released, and then we wait for 0 0.2 seconds, and we check again, we check again, and so forth. And here we actually start this function, and then as usual, we need to have a lambda handler, even though we don't handle any incoming events, so we just define one, which do nothing. So, um, again, we need to um, create a zip file for this, packing this file and the Greengrass SDK into a zip file. So we can create a lambda for it in our uh, environment here. So we'll go back to this one and we say we add a lambda, we create a new one. We actually want to um, uh, give them some name here. And we will not use Node.js, this is a Python script, so we will do use that one. And we click on create the create function button. It's behind the picture on the on the uh, breadboard here, but yeah, you know where it is by now, I guess. So now we have our function. Um, we go here. We upload our zip file, and uh, now we go down to um, control pin get the zip file, so we have this function we actually want to have, and as usual we need to create a version for this, because we need a version to be able to create an alias, and the alias is what we use in, uh, in ABS IoT to define which version we are actually running. So now when we have done this, we go here, we choose our Control in Lambda function with the alias, not the version as usual, and we create that. Now, as usual, we need to edit this, this configuration and say that this is a long lived, otherwise, we will not, it will never be triggered. And we need, as usual, to say that we want this. Lambda function to be able to send to the back office on the hello world topic. But now we also need to define resources here because we we actually want to be able to access the um, uh, uh, the uh, GPIO pins. So for that we actually need to um, be able to do like this. So. We have a device, and uh, we can uh, pick a unique name for this, so we can say GPIO access. Oops, sorry. Uh, so it's a device, and it's like this, and we need to say it's automatically add OS group. So, you know, I add this so that uh, the, the user that actually runs Greengrass can actually do this. And we need to find, say that this is for this specific um, Lambda. Okay, so now we have affiliated our Lambda with this uh, GPIO access. We have created the Lambda, made it run long running. We have created the, um, so we can um, host. So now we actually just need to deploy. And uh, while we're doing that, we can start subscribing to this one as well. Acknowledge layer string. So now we have uh, all our code downloaded. Thanks, Peter. Um, so now we can just try to see what happens here. We press the button here. Ah, the lead starts and stops. And each time I press the button, you can see there is a message sent to the backend and also the lamp starts uh, and stops when I release the button. And uh, so when I, I press the button, uh, the pin goes, um, goes down and uh, uh, the code recognizes that and sends the message to the back office and also turns the LED on them. 
So here we can see that we have the um, uh, the button to um, to ground and then to pin 24, I think. And then here on the other side we have um, uh, the um, the pin 23 to the LED, and then from the other side of the LED to the resistor, and then back to ground again. So when this goes down, then this goes high, and the LED is lit. So now we have um, a Raspberry Pi Lambda, uh, a Greengrass Lambda, um, operating on the key PIO pins, or connected to the Raspberry Pi.